Good morning. morning. Welcome to River Community Church. My name's Sean. I'm the worship pastor here, and they're letting me speak today. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have to tell you something about our worship team. Our worship team, they're all works in progress, okay? They would all admit that to you. That would be the first thing they'd tell you. Not only that, but a lot of them have struggled through many things, um, through many dark times of drug addiction, some have struggled through anxiety, some have struggled through depression, anger issues, but they all have one thing in common. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you that I don't lead the worship here, and the worship team doesn't lead the worship here. The Holy Spirit leads the worship. We pray every morning We just want to be out of it. We want to let the Holy Spirit take over, okay? So um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in music most of my life, but uh, my main career was as an engineer, and I was a quality engineer for many years, and then I had the calling to to come to worship, and um, I started in my first week here, I remember I was working on the song, and it was a difficult hymn that I wanted to do. I think it was in Christ Alone. And I was struggling with it for about an hour. And then I finally, I put my guitar down. And I said, man, I got to get back to work. I got to get back to work. So I put my guitar down. And then I was like, wait a second. That's my job now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went and grabbed my guitar. But I, I took a moment to thank the Lord. I took a moment to, to thank the Lord. But it was such a freeing experience when you can um, follow the Lord's plan and purpose for you. And I, I asked Lord, I said, how did I get this freedom? I certainly don't deserve it. And he's like, no, you don't. <laughs> but you surrendered. You surrendered. See, that's the key. And I remembered many years back when I started serving here. And um, uh, the worship pastor at the time was Randy Chaw. Does anybody remember Pastor Randy? Some of you do. He was an awesome, thank you, man. He's an awesome man, man of God. And he said, Sean, I want you to do this song, Surrender. And I'm like, I have a problem with that. He goes, why? He goes, well, I don't really feel like, like like when you surrender, you think of somebody holding you down and saying, hey, you will give in, right? And that's not how it happened with me. When I surrendered, it actually felt like freedom. And he said, exactly. That's why I want you to do this song. Um, this is what Paul says about it. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. See, we have a loving God, and when you surrender to God, it's, it's a different thing. He loves you. He actually wants to free you. We're in this series right now called Represent. And uh, Pastor Danny and Pastor Sam have been talking about the early church and how the Holy Spirit comes to the church and how um, uh, the book of Acts, we're talking about uh, Peter. And we're going to talk today a little bit about Paul. And Paul was a, a great teacher on grace, love, and mercy. 
and probably the most unlikely person to be teaching that. And we'll find out about that in a little bit. But um, Paul was a great leader of the early church. He was, um, he's still a great leader today, 2,000 years later. How is that possible? Well, a lot of what he wrote we can find in the New Testament. He, but he didn't start that way. And um, I want to read what he says about his old self a little bit. He says this in Galatians chapter 2. He says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul has a relationship. He has a relationship with the Lord. He found out the hard way that you can't think your way to God. But Paul's new self is not perfect. We, we see in, in a lot of his writings that he says this, and we also find in uh, Acts 20, he's given a sermon, and it says that he's going on and on and on, and there's this young man sitting up three stories, and he falls asleep and falls. <laughs> and Paul has to save him, but have you ever had that happen? Have you ever been... Somebody's going on and on, and you uh, fall asleep. I was, in my last job, I was in this, I was in this executive meeting, and we had a very uh, upper management person that was giving a very important talk, and he was just going on and on. I'm sorry. I could, I could not stay awake. And have you ever did that? Like, what happens first is you're, you hold your eyes really hard open, and you're like, I can do that. I'm awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. And your eyes start to go down, but then your neck drops. But the great thing about that is when your neck drops, it wakes you up. Have you ever had this happen? You kind of go like this. You jerk up, and you look around and see if anybody noticed. And then you're like, awake, 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 awake. So I did this like a couple times, and the third time, it didn't work. Third, third time, it didn't work head went down, and my whole body <laughs> smacks the table. <laughs> head hits the table. Everybody's looking at me. You think that's crazy? Uh, take a look at this. We all have our weaknesses, but you know, I threw a little humor in there actually because I'm about to get really deep with you. I'm about to get really dark with you because what you need to know about Paul was that he was initially called Saul of Tarsus and he was on a terror to kill all of the Christians in the beginning of the church. They were called the way at the time. That's what they called the movement and he was out to kill them all. Um, Saul means, it means like, it's, it has like a king connotation to it. it. The word Saul means desired, okay? So Saul, you know, he had this big, high, and mighty name, and he was very well respected. He was actually highly respected. Tarsus was a city that was very academically respected throughout the region, just like Ripon is, very respected ac academic a city. And... Um, he eventually gets to train and study under a man named Gamaliel. Now, if you got to study under Gamaliel, it was like getting into Harvard. It was like if you're studying physics and you got to study under Albert Einstein, it's a big deal. But he was missing a prerequisite. Now, when you go to college, usually there's classes you have to take, there are prerequisites, and you need the basic fundamental knowledge. So you take this class so that you can take the advanced class. And they won't let you take the advanced class. 
And um, Saul was missing this class. And this class was the grace, love, and mercy of God. And the problem with it is there was nobody to teach the class. Because the only one that could teach that class right was Jesus. And they killed Jesus. But Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. And you know, as I go through seminary, I'm so thankful for this church. I'm so thankful for that we are grounded in that grace and love, mercy of God. But I want to read you this story, and I thought, well, I want to tell this story, and you know, there's no better way for me to do it than actually read it, because it doesn't get any better than it is here. So I'm going to read this from the Bible. This is in Acts 9. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and he asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, that's the movement, whether man or woman, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Very cool. He fell to the ground, and he heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And here's what this uh, highly educated man of God asked. He says, who are you, Lord? He didn't know. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up. And go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Not yet on the... (laughs) Um, Can you imagine what it might be like, you know, and and if you had this experience in your life where everything you thought you knew, you suddenly realize you don't? So he gets up to go into the city, but there's a problem. There's a problem. He goes blind. Everything goes dark. Awesome. (laughs) I wanted you to feel it a little bit, okay? Especially you leaders, because I want you to realize, okay, Saul, high and mighty Saul, he is, um, he's the leader. And they're, they're looking to him for what the next move is. And he has to say, can somebody take my hand? Can somebody take my hand because I can't make it into the city. I can't see where I'm going. Have you ever felt that way? He couldn't see it then, but he can see it now. I couldn't see it then, but I believe it now. Just a sinking soul, tired of reaching, stuck on the tracks, train bearing down, screaming for my lungs, who will save me? The reruns and the regrets take a place inside my head. Got the devil on my shoulder and he's leaving me for dead. His whispers and lies have brought me here. Spread my fears through doubt and fear. Oh, I, I could not see it. And oh, I, I could not see it. Oh, my God. I remember when I cried. Shook my fists up at the sky. What do I? You felt so far from me, oh God. He was in my deepest pain. That I heard you call my name. I heard you say that you were right there with me. I couldn't see it then, but I believe it. Trying to hold my head up when the ground fell. I felt all alone, even in the crowd, like the sea. Breaking my heart down 
The weight of the sorrows it carried on my chest. It kept pulling me under, and I couldn't catch my breath. Not how I thought my life would go. Didn't know my heart could sink this low. No, I, I did not see it then. No, I, I did not see it. Oh, my God, I remember when I cried. Shift my fists up at the sky. I wonder why you felt so far from me. Oh, God, it was in my deepest pain that I heard you call my name. You say that you were right there with me. Love was standing there, just holding me, but I couldn't see that love was always there. He carried me, and now I believe. Oh my God, I know you hurt me when I cried Cause you were right there by my side I realized you would never left me Oh God, it was in my deepest pain That I heard you call my name I heard you say that you were right there It doesn't take long for the grace, love, and mercy of, of God to enter into Saul's life because he prays and the Lord sends Ananias. And uh, three days later, the Lord steps in and gives him back his sight. You know, we all want to make our own way. We all want freedom. It's, it's human nature, right? Right? But I don't, don't be sold on what the world is selling you as what freedom is. Freedom is not following your self, selfish desires. It's really not. You know this. You know this. I mean, you've, you've struggled. You've, you've, you've went on your own way. How's that working for you? How's that worked out? Does it feel like freedom or does it feel a little more like exhaustion? You know, it always starts out good. I mean, remember, like, for example, you're driving to Chicago, and you're on 23, and you're going down the road, you got the radio on, you're behind the wheel, you're like, I'm in control, I'm loving it. And then you get down 41, and it's like getting a little congested with some traffic, but you're okay. You're like, okay, put two hands on the wheel, starting to realize you have a lot of blind spots on your car. And then you get closer to Chicago and you start getting in rush hour traffic. And before you know it, you have, you have a semi on this side of you and a semi on that side of you. And you can't see because you got blind spots. And then this little electric car <laughs> cuts in front of you and cuts you off. <laughs> and you, you hit the brakes, you almost go under the semi, get it straightened out. And then the little electric car goes around you and he does this. He goes, Right? I can do this, like, if I... <laughs> he gives you the sign. That's the way it is in life. That's when you... When you um, see, you can't be free when you have blinders on. You can't be free. Um, I want to read to you what Paul says about it. He starts out talking about, you know, the Pharisees of the time and the people of the time... That, that did not know Jesus. And he says this, he says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, Yes, even today, 
when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil, and they do not understand. Jesus is all over that, but they don't understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. See, the freedom is in surrendering to the Lord. He removes the blinders. Um, but freedom sometimes in this world isn't really what freedom is. Freedom is really in serving. Um, and freedom, when you take those blinders off, you get this awareness. When I was, um, I'm going to tell you this, and I've never really told anybody this, but when I was in, I was in this rock band a, a few years ago, and I abruptly quit the rock band. And there was all these rumors as to why I quit the rock band. One of them was, well, Sean's a holy roller now, and a lot of the songs have lyrics that he wouldn't want to sing. That's not true. Okay, And then some people said, well, that's not it. It's that you know, he doesn't want to go into those clubs or into those bars or what. He doesn't want to associate that. that. And no, that's absolutely not true. Let me tell you why I, I quit uh, the band I was in. When you ask the Lord to be your Savior, he gives you an awareness. The veil comes off, and I would step up on stage and I, for the first time, I could see the sadness. I could see what I once thought and saw people as having a great time and partying it up. I can now see behind that. I could see the drug addiction. I could see the alcoholism. And sometimes I would go home and I would, on the way home, you know, I get broke up about it. And um, because I wasn't really doing much about it. And I wanted to do something about it. And um, you, you got to understand, that's where the freedom comes. The freedom is really in the serving. It's, it's not in the, the selfish uh, gain that you're getting. That's not where it's at. We're going to do this song. I want to do this song with you. It's called I Surrender. It says, I surrender all to you. You want to take that step. Um, I encourage you to sing. And here's the thing: I, you don't have to stand, and you don't have to sit. You may want to kneel, stand, sit. You can do whatever. Don't worry about what the person next to you is doing. Some of you can come up, come up here, and uh, sit up on the stage. Whatever you want to do. What I'd like you to do is get to that spot with the Lord. Find that spot that only you can get to. Okay. And we're going to do a song called Surrender.
We're so thankful that you love us so much that you would die for us on that cross because you want to save us and you love us that much that you do that. We just want a relationship with you. We want to go closer to you, Lord, and we just ask you for guidance through the Holy Spirit to do that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.